Now, these are the rules that we follow whenever we try to balance chemical equations. Okay, rule number one, write the number of atoms for both sides of the chemical equation. Now, also remember some of the rules that we have in counting the number of atoms in your chemical equation or in your chemical compound. Okay, now remember that your subscripts only apply to an element. Okay, so your subscript, the number, the little number at the bottom, that only applies to the element to its left. Okay, now letter B, coefficients apply to all elements. We've already discussed this when we talked about counting atoms. Now, of course, we also have letter C, subscripts outside parentheses apply to all elements inside them. Okay, so again, your subscripts can only be applied to the element to its left. All coefficients apply to all the elements. If you have subscripts outside your parentheses, they'd also be applied to all the elements inside your parentheses. Okay, now rule number two, look for odd number of atoms and try to even them out by writing coefficients. Now, very important for you to know, rule number three, you can only write coefficients, not subscripts, okay? So again, you can only write coefficients, that number before your chemical compound, not your subscripts, not those little numbers that you find at the bottom. Okay, now say you have this as your example, okay? We have this as our chemical equation sample. You have carbon dioxide added to water, giving you glucose at C6H12O6 plus oxygen gas. Who can give us the different elements that we have in our equation? Well, again, you have carbon, you also have oxygen, and of course you have hydrogen. Now, according to your conservation of mass, the law of conservation of mass, your matter cannot be created nor destroyed in a chemical equation. That means whatever reactant you have or whatever elements that you have at the reactant side, that is at the, the left side of your chemical equation, that should also be the, the elements that you have at the product side of your chemical equation, okay? So again, whatever elements that you have at the reactant side should be the same elements that you have at the product side. So again, we have carbon, we have hydrogen and oxygen, the same things we have at the product side of your chemical equation. Now, who can give us the number of atoms at the reactant side? That means for carbon reactant side, you have one carbon, of a uh, carbon atom. Then for your hydrogen, you only have two. There's a subscript of two here, so that means there's two atoms of hydrogen. Now, total number of atoms for oxygen, that's going to be three. Why three? You have two here. That's a subscript of two, of two. And of course, you have one atom here. There's no subscript, so that means there's only one atom. We add two and one, so that gives us a total number of three atoms of oxygen. Now, what about at the product side? There's six atoms of carbon, that's correct. Okay, you have 12 atoms of hydrogen. And of course, for oxygen, you have a total of eight. That's six plus two, so that gives us a total of eight atoms of oxygen. Okay, so these are the number of atoms So we have for the product side, carbon, there's six atoms, hydrogen, there's 12, and of course for oxygen, there are eight atoms. Now clearly you can see that our chemical equation is not balanced because if you check the number of atoms for carbon here, reactant side, we only have one. Product side, we have six. Two for hydrogen at the reactant side, 12 for the product side. Now for oxygen, you have three for the reactant side and eight for the product side. So that means our chemical equation is not balanced. Remember the law of conservation of mass states that matter is not, de not destroyed nor created in your chemical reaction. So that means we always need to balance our chemical equation. All right, so again, reactant side, you have one atom of carbon. Product side, you have six atoms of carbon. Now, what are we going to multiply by one to give us a total number of six for carbon atoms? Six. Okay, so that should be six here. So that means we write a coefficient of six for carbon dioxide, okay? So when that happens, you need to multiply your coefficient by your subscript, okay? So again, your coefficient would be applied to all the atoms that you have in this compound, okay? So that's six multiplied by one, which gives us six atoms of carbon, okay? So that means the number of carbon atoms are now balanced at both sides of our equation, okay? So reactant side and product side. Now both have six atoms of carbon. But when you did that, remember that your coefficient is also applied to oxygen here, okay? It can also be applied to oxygen. So when that happens, you multiply six by two, so that gives you 12, 
and there is another atom of oxygen here. So that means total number of oxygen now is 13 for your reactant site. Okay, so 13 oxygen atoms for your reactant site now, which means that still your oxygen atoms are not balanced. Okay, oxygen at the reactant and product side are not balanced. All right, now we go next to your hydrogen atoms. Okay, you have 12 at the product side and you only have two at your reactant side. Now, who can give us the correct coefficient here? It would be six. Okay, it, it should be six. That's correct, Daniel. Okay, so Daniel says six. And that's going to be six multiplied by two. So that would give us 12 hydrogen atoms at the reactant side. So as you can see, hydrogen atoms are now balanced. Okay, so there's 12 at the reactant side. That's six times two. There's also 12 at the product side. So we're balanced in terms of carbon atoms. The chemical equation is also balanced in terms of hydrogen atoms. Our only problem now is the, um, your oxygen atoms. Remember, we added a coefficient of six here, so that makes your hydrogen, uh, your hydrogen atoms 12, but there's also going to be a change in your number of oxygen atoms, okay? Because of course, your coefficient is applied to all the atoms that you have in your chemical compound. So that means it shouldn't be 13 anymore. It shouldn't be 13 here anymore. That should be six times, two, uh, six times two, that will give you 12. Then there's six times one. So that is going to be 12 plus six, which should already be 18, okay? So that should already be 18, okay? So 18 atoms of oxygen at the reactant side. What should we have here? as our coefficient to make them balanced. Miles and Abigail said it should be six, and that is the correct answer, okay? It should be six. So you'll have six times two giving you 12 plus six over here, okay? So you still have six atoms of oxygen here. So that's six times two giving you 12 plus six, which gives us a total of 18 atoms of oxygen, okay? So now, as you can see, our chemical equation is balanced. We only needed to add the coefficients here, again, remember, you can only write the coefficients, not the subscripts. You don't write subscripts whenever you're balancing your chemical, chemical equation. You are only allowed to write your coefficients, okay? So the correct answer should be six molecules of carbon dioxide plus six molecules of water, giving you one molecule of glucose plus six uh, molecules of oxygen gas, okay? So that makes our chemical equation balanced now.